Hey, everybody. Welcome to another absolutely glorious episode of Jeff Has Cool Friends. My name's Jeff May, and you'll never believe this. I have I have cool friends. Not today, though. Uh, no, uh, today you might know this uh, guest, this week's guest, as uh, one of my co-hosts on several shows, including uh, his uh, world-famous Unpopular Opinion podcast, as well as You Don't Even Like Sports, a sports podcast about he... How he does Jeff not like sports. No, that's not about you. You might know him uh, from his various writings across the internet, Cracked and, and Playboy and uh, other spaces that I didn't want to research uh, to figure yeah. that out. No, it's not that important. Uh, you might know him from a bunch of stuff. He's a very, very funny man. Let's give it up for Adam Todd Brown. Adam. Hey. Says here you're an international jewel thief. I am that. I, well, multinational. Multi, I think the international is a couple, not just cut, just two, just like Paraguay and yeah. Uruguay. You're like, I stick yeah. with the Gways, just a few, just a few. Um, so the last time we did a show like this was October of 2019. That was the show that shall not be named. That was a long time ago, it was a little while ago. But being that being said, we have done lots of shows together since then, a few, yeah, yeah, but we've but, been on a few, but they've always been about other things. And this is about you and Gross. I'm, and I'm going to just make money off of talking about you. Like, how funny is that? Oh, yeah, that's that's fine. That's, that's fine. what I'm going to do. I'm making content about a content maker. And honestly, that's the greatest thing anybody can do. It's very meta. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a very Ouroboros situation. It's just <laughs> we are a couple of snakes eating our own tails. But you are, uh, in my opinion, you're a fascinating person. Uh, a very unlikable, but uh, a fascinating sure. person. Because you are um, sort of like you are the Internet's Adam Todd Brown. You have made uh, quite a nice little niche for yourself. And yeah, I want to talk. I do, I do all right. You did all right. You, you've, yeah. you've done fine. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we would say that, uh, you know, I think your your big start came from and by big start. I don't mean the first thing, but like cracked seems to be where you got your uh, notoriety to start with. And then you took that kind of formed it into a ball of your own making and then just kind of did your own thing and you let it take over itself. Yeah. Cracked is the first place that ever paid me to write. Mm -hmm. Once that happened, I just got it in my head that I wanted to do something like that for a living because I was working an insurance job at the time and I hated it. Yeah. And that that's been my kind of my, the main motivating factor behind what I do has always been, Ben, I don't want a boss. Uh, I I have a I have a problem with authority on the job, and in general, but yeah. especially on the job. So, yeah, once I got paid to write at Cracked, I just kind of used that to get other writing jobs and worked a whole lot. And eventually, it uh, it all culminated in a job at Playboy that ended up getting me a job at Cracked. And then, uh, and then, so cracked, uh, cracked, got rid of you in the the in a very way. And I think we're far, far enough away from cracked to be able to be like that was really the way it went down. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can go into all the specifics because I signed an NDA. Sure, but it definitely wasn't an amicable parting of ways. Like we, there was no like yelling or screaming. No, I'd say one of the positive, I'd say one of the things that is public record. And I could say, I did not sign an NDA and I watched some of this happen and, and, and literally watched it. Not, not like you telling me, but literally watched it. Right. You, you did um, an article about crowdfunding because you were crowdfunding the unpopular opinion, uh, a, a network. And they let you write this article and they approved it and everything. And then immediately after you started the network, you got fired. Right. And, 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 uh, for starting, for starting a, a, a competing network, network right. even though they knew that that's what was happening. And that's some shady. Shit. Um, and that's not to say that the, the company is necessarily whoever is involved in making those decisions did some very shady. Shit. Uh, and I always felt like, of all the things I see where sometimes I can see like, oh, okay, I get the other side of it. This is one yeah. of those situations where I was like, this is some dog right here. Yeah. And it's, it's actually worse than I can even talk about. Of course. <laughs> really? Like it was, you know, it, it's hard to accuse me of 
starting a competing thing when I didn't know we were starting a thing. Yeah. A, like, a podcast network. Yeah. I, I had no idea Cracked was starting a podcast network when uh, I started Unpops, which is crazy because I was the only other podcast at Cracked at were, the time. What was, were you, was Unpops the first Cracked podcast or was the the Cracked podcast first? The Cracked podcast okay. was first, but they started right around the same time. Yeah. To hear you were going to do it and they were just like, no, us first. I don't even remember yeah. how it, it came to be. I think it was because Sarah Ricard started working there and uh, she had come from radio and uh, she was like, why don't we uh, get into podcasts? And you rolled with that. Uh, and you were like, I will do that. And you're very good at it. Um, Thank you. I would say uh, you're an excellent host, but uh, one of the things that you, you have certain things that you are very, very, very good at. Um, and, and there are two things that I see is that one, uh, I consider you to be a bit of a futurist in that you can map out how things happen. You're very good at cause and effect and seeing, are you like, do you play chess? I don't, but I've always wanted to learn how to play chess. I feel like you'd be very good at chess because you see how things are going to sort of end up way in advance. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later yeah. but, but also um you're very good at research like yeah you, like what if what if that's almost like a curse to be good at something like that uh, yeah it's i mean i had to do so much of it when i was writing for a living that it it, it just kind of comes natural now like i'm i don't know i can't even describe it it just really comes easy it's a, i mean really i think natural talents are hard to describe because you're just like people are like how do you do that and you're like i don't no. Yeah. If, like to me, I just see it as I'm good at Googling. <laughs> like that's like when I would, when I would write a list article at cracked, the way it would happen is there would, I would find one news story that seemed interesting. And with cracked, you had to build that into a list, which meant I would have to find, you know, six or seven more examples of that because when it goes through the editorial process, a couple of the examples might get cut. So you have to find that consistent thread that runs through all of these stories. And that takes a lot of just running whatever keywords seem like they might work into Google and hoping for the best. Hmm. And I just, I've done that for so many years that I just kind of like, I know exactly what words to search to find what I'm looking for, even if I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I get it. Like, you just want to, like, find it. You want to go in. Yeah, it's you wanna, like you just like I need I need to get information about dumpsters. So what what keywords would you have to look up that aren't specifically the word dumpsters in order to get you to where you need to be? Well, yeah, like in, in a case like that, you want to go with synonyms. Like if you're looking like not everyone's going to call them dumpsters. Like People Adam Todd Brown. Trash bins. There's going to be the Jeff Mays out there. A dustbin or, if you're British. Dustbin then, governor, in it. I remember I, I was dating a uh, I was dating a British me was. <laughs> and she was like, oi, governor, that's a loud dustbin van driving outside. She called, she called the, she called my local trash, uh, trash truck, my garbage truck. She called it a dustbin van. I was like, can you say that word again and explain to me what the frick that's supposed to mean? It's the only kind of garbage they have in England. Just dust. dust. Just yeah. dust from all their creaky white bones. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so it, it's okay. So you started on popular opinion and uh, ironically, unpopular opinion, a popular name for podcasts. There, are, there is at least one other one that exists. It, it sure is. I have actually considered trying to trademark the name. It's and what, I, I think I would be successful. I, I was going to ask you if you would trademark unpopular opinion, uh, and unpops, which is sort of what the name of the the network and show has sort of become. Right. Yeah, I've I've thought about it. We registered as an LLC earlier this year and we got the name Unpopular Opinion LLC, which we've been 
I've been using that name as a comedy show since 2012. 2013? Well, think, if, remember, it was a comedy show first. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. At West Side Comedy Theater. And it's, then I, I initially started this podcast to promote that show. That's actually where we met. Yeah. So you and I both met. Uh, we met on Facebook, ironically. Yes. So so we were Facebook friends. And uh, you would, uh, my brother actually had told me that you were doing a stand-up show. He's like, I think this is near you. And it was at West Side Comedy Theater, which was... You know, I'm in the valley. It was it was in Santa Monica, so it's you know, 40 minute drive or something like Not that. Not near, but um, and he's like, You should go. And I checked and tickets were already sold out. So I messaged you and was like, Hey, I'm a comic. I also like your work. Uh, I'd love to come. And you were like, Fucking come. You're like, just come. And we met, and then like we just became friends. Yeah, it was weird. It was it there aren't I don't click with people immediately that way. It was very rare. Same. What's that? Same. Yeah, yeah. And especially because you're such a bad person. Well, yeah, it's it's weird because I do hate you so much. Yeah, okay. So it's not just me. No, it's, no, it's not just you. But okay. I also, I really like you and we really get along. It's, it's very wild. strange. And yeah, the like, I moved here to work at Cracked and I knew all of those people before I moved here. Mm -hmm. And... I had it in my head that, oh, yeah, I'm going to get there and I'm going to we're all going to hang out. And it it doesn't it doesn't work that way. Because no, once you way. once you're there and in, in an office like your coworkers now yeah. and I, I know some of them hung out, but I just was not I was not a social guy. I've never been a social person in work environments. Mm -hmm. So you were like the first friend I made in los angeles yeah i mean because because it was i i had just gotten there at labor day of 2012 so i was still feeling myself out and it it was hard for me in comedy to make friends because i look like such a mm -hmm. and i know mm -hmm. that that is it, it almost seems like a humble brag but it's it's not like i i have a i have the look of the person that bullied you in high school and comedians generally were the bullied right so right. like it happened to me at the comic shop and it happens to me in comedy where people assume I'm a f ass or a cop you, or you have, yeah, I get that a lot, especially you have a real cop look. And most comics have cocaine in their pockets. So yeah, every, every year I get more copy, more cop looking. It's, <laughs> it's, it's such a curse, but probably because you're training to be a cop right now. Oh man. Would that be the worst? It would. Yeah. Could you imagine like the fact that I, cause I used to train cops out of fight. And I feel like that makes me like an accessory to violence. It sure does. Yeah. I, I, Did that, you do that warrior cop training? No, I taught them how to box. I taught them. You know what it was? It was the speed bag. Cops were oh, yeah. famously bad at the speed bag. But my when I started boxing at Westfield State College in Westfield, Massachusetts, my coach was like he was a Mickey. He was like an old 80 something year old guy wore winter hats in the summer. He also trained the state police and he was like, these guys do not know how to use a speed bag and they don't know how to learn. So I, it was a lot of me trying to teach them how to use a speed bag because they, they would just, they couldn't. And that's important to keeping your hands up and your reflexes. And yeah. they just didn't know how to defend themselves, probably for the shooting people. I'm going to go fight a cop now. See if they, see if they worked it out. I mean, you know. UFC's gotten very popular since then. A lot <laughs> True. of, a lot True. of, a lot of fucking. Are you, are you? Do you like the UFC? I was just gonna say, I think I'm going to get the the UFC pay per view tonight, just because I'm hoping to see Conor McGregor get knocked out. He sure is a racist, huh? He's a real piece of. Shit. I don't. The only thing I like about Conor McGregor is the way he says the name of his whiskey in those commercials. Proper number twelve. Yeah, that's like being like the only thing I like about a person is their accent, which they can't control. Like exactly, yes. Like I love when people are like, "That's not racism." He just calls black people boy, and yeah, it's like Conor mm, McGregor's a real problem. Yeah, I hope Dustin Poirier knocks him the f out tonight. Side note: yeah. he, He's Irish, and I don't know if you know anything about the Irish, but it's not a tolerant uh, group. No, no, not for most things. Funny. Yeah, I've I've kind of gotten into UFC recently just because the 
my morning routine is I get up and watch first take, which is an ESPN sports show. And whenever they cover an upcoming UFC thing, then I know it's kind of a big deal because they don't talk about UFC that much. And I think these fights happen like every weekend or something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's seriously like UFC is like Boba T. It's just like, where did this come from everywhere? Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. It's like subway. Yeah. I, so the, the bigger matches all sometimes get on pay-per-view and, uh, Do they've you... been really entertaining. Cause I was such a big boxing fan as a kid. Like I grew up in the eighties, which was, that was the golden age of televised boxing. Yeah. There, there, it's interesting that people are like, Oh, boxing isn't interesting anymore. I'm like, the only way boxing is really like interesting is when, you know, Floyd Mayweather fights a celebrity which is, I think, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, an absolute piece of garbage. Greatest fighter, pound for pound, probably of all time. Uh, and I do, lo- I do love that a internet personality took him to a full decision and Conor McGregor got knocked out by Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, there, there is something. I mean, they, I don't think they weigh the same, right? The, the Paul, he, he, he can't weigh the same as Floyd Mayweather. That dude is he's a big dude. He's massive. And Floyd Mayweather is not. No, Floyd Mayweather is very small for a boxer. But it is I I think people underestimate just how much of a business person Floyd Mayweather is and knows how to ensure future millions. Yeah. Like he's a person that knows, like, if you see Floyd Mayweather giving a close fight to somebody, chances are he's doing that on purpose so he can make several hundred million dollars in the future. Yeah, he's he's brilliant and so boring to watch, but it's because he's really good at that one specific thing, which is defense. We've actually we talked about this on a a podcast back in the day, back uh, back. I believe it was on when we did the Monday show. And it was like, if you understand the techniques of boxing, it's very exciting to watch. Oh, yeah. Of like the defense. But defense isn't exciting. Yeah. And I miss watching boxing. There was. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, that fight happened like right before COVID started. Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to fight again this month, which I was very excited about. But Tyson Fury has COVID now. So that fight got pushed to the fall. So fight culture is fascinating to me, uh, being somebody who was mired in it. When it came time for when COVID restrictions started and like when they started to like bring gyms back, and people were like, oh, you're going to go back to your boxing gym? I was like, absolutely not. Because as much as I love fighting and boxing, I do not love the culture that surrounds it, especially that like toxic, stupid masculinity yeah. where people think they're tough so they can like, I'm healthy or like, it's just a virus. It's just like the flu. And I'm like, you've got to be the dumbest mother on the planet. No wonder you get punched in the head. Yeah, I've I've always hated that kind of toxic masculinity thing in general. It's the reason I don't like watching sports at a bar. Like I've just like you're you're huge and you're a, a, a giant ass, but you're not aggressive. Like in I like that. Like, I don't like really like loud, aggressive, mad if you're not cheering enough at a football game type of energy. Yeah. Like, I just want to f- relax, even if I'm watching sports. I sit at concerts. I don't f- want to stand at a concert. I want I, anytime that there's a concert that involves standing. I'm like, I'm, I'm just not going to go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm good. Yeah, general general admission floor is not for me. I'm if I'm in a situation like that, I'm way in the back, leaning on something, waiting to be the first victim in a mass shooting. Standing standing for extended periods of time is not a part of entertainment for me. It's also it's another reason like I don't want to be miserable while I'm trying to be entertained. It's why I don't like going to football games. Football is the worst to watch in person, dude. It's in New England. Are you sh- I, it was the work like people would be like, we want to go to the Patriots game. We can sit on a um, on a cold metal bench. <laughs> it is 
negative 10 degrees out and we can't see what's happening. So we have to look at the TV up at the top. And I'm like, well, don't we have a TV at home? It's part of the yeah. experience. So, but did you pay $45 to park at home? <laughs> did you get awful nachos for $18 at home? Yeah. Football is my favorite sport and the worst sport to watch in person. It It is made solely for television. What's your favorite sport to watch in person? I don't do it that often, but I really like watching hockey in it's so person. Good. I would say I, hockey is the is the the premier watching live experience. It's great. It's great in person. And I just I tried recently when there weren't that many sports happening and the NHL playoffs were on. And I was like, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to watch hockey on TV and I just can't do it. But yeah. in person, it's great. Uh it's funny. Um, shout out uh, to the All the Kings Men podcast, uh, the official podcast of the uh, Los Angeles Kings. They are uh, fans of the of of Unpops and and of of ours. And so he would hook up really good seats whenever the Bruins were in town. Oh, nice. The yeah. Well, uh, for uh, uh, Valerie Tossi's birthday was last March, uh, and it's always March. <laughs> so uh march 19th of 2020 we had these amazing seats lined up so of course right it had, it was literally covid shut everything down right then and i was like ah shit. like i love watching live hockey i and i'm not a huge basketball fan and i love watching live basketball too um i like watching basketball on tv and in person baseball for me is something that i like going to but baseball is such a passive thing to watch because there's so many lulls in it that's what i like about baseball it's good i watch baseball a lot when i'm doing research mm -hmm. because you know when you have to pay attention to a baseball game like you can hear the energy yeah. like from the announcers from the crowd you know it's time to look up things are tense but then there's going to be three or four innings where you can just like focus the Chill. entire time on what you're doing. Yeah. Also going to baseball games is like a great way to be like, you know what I want to do? Get a terrible sunburn today. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be selective when you're choosing baseball tickets. Like yeah. if you're going during the day, you, you want to get under something. You yeah. don't want to be out in the sun. Get me that, uh, get me that obstructed view. Cause that means there's something above me. Yep. Yeah, uh, it is. It's it is very funny, too, because like I do like I enjoy going to, to baseball games. I think you are the person I've gone to the most baseball games with. Yeah, I would say so. I think so. We uh, we did one with the uh, the cracked crew, I believe. I think uh, was it Alex Schmidt uh, from Secretly Incredibly Fascinating and also Jeopardy uh, organized that. Right. It was like yes. it was a White Sox game. It was Adam Ganser and Brett Raider mm -hmm. and uh, Chet Wild was there and just a, a nice little crew. Alex Schmidt is probably the biggest baseball fan I know. And he has a great story from when he first moved out to L.A. to work at Cracked. They organized this trip to go to a Dodgers game. And uh, I forgot get who was pitching i want to say clayton kershaw but he was throwing a no hitter and around the seventh inning all of the cracked people are like yeah this game's kind of boring we should probably just pack it up and leave and alex is so beholden to the baseball tradition that says when someone is in the process of throwing a no hitter you don't talk about it if you mention it you're going to jinx it so <laughs> He apparently was trying to throw them all these subtle hints that, hey, something big is happening and you're just not connecting with what's going on. But this is a pretty cool thing. And he couldn't get it through to them that this no hitter was in progress and they left. And sure enough, it was a no hitter. I mean, it's funny because if, if anybody who knows of Alex Schmidt, uh, he is a, a very uh, kind person. And yes. so that. uh that is one of those situations. Hey, Adam, I don't know if you know this, but um, I have some producers that sign up at the uh, patreon.com slash Jeff May level, the producer level. Mm. And uh, they weird, weird. Huh? I, would, I wouldn't do that. It's wild. But they they uh, they pay me money 
and then I say their name during the show. And then you can make fun of their names if you want or compliment their names or do literally nothing about their names. I will I will do all of those things for each name. We can do that. I'm absolutely yeah. ready for that. And that's a good way for us to talk about nothing. Uh, it's like this is like the Seinfeld of podcasts. <laughs> oh, airplane food. Um, so uh, we will start. And again, if you want to be uh, a producer member, go to Jeff May, patreon.com slash Jeff May, and you can sign up for that. If you are a patron, thank you so much for that. Uh, don't. What was that? Don't. Don't give. Don't do that. Also don't agreed. Also, I agree. If you don't want me to read your name, that's fine. I'm OK. Yeah. I'm 100 percent OK with that. So uh, first we have the Bullock. <laughs> the bullock the bullock like, like spell is it spelled like sandra bullock i think it, no it's like one nut in british oh okay it's the bullock oh hey bollocks it's, it's to one, you one nut in it he's got one nuts in it Ew. uh we have nathan christopher charles oh. ascani son day spring summers that's one name that's the name of cable from the marvel comics oh okay yeah i knew that uh how about Ooh, this is a good one uh an action figure of clippy Clippy. Hey guys, you want me to read your name? <laughs> Shout out to old uh old bits. How about this Don Ass? Don Ass? Remember Don Ass, the baseball player? No, but that's that's a great name. A A S E. Don A Ace Ass. Oh yeah. Um C2E2 AM Adventures. That's a Chicago, uh, that's the a Chicago Comic Con. Oh, um, very nice. The Chicago Comics and Entertainment Expo, also known as C2E2. Oh, I am I am from Illinois. You sure so. are. You're from Peoria. Yeah. Crime Town. Yeah. All the all the violence and poverty of Chicago with none of the nightlife. I was going to say Peoria is the Worcester of Illinois, so I <laughs> yeah. very much recognize that. Yeah. Um, uh, we have Mike Terascasi Master Adam. You might not know, but Terascasi was a Star Wars fighting game for the PlayStation one. Wow. It sounds like you got a bunch of nerds giving you money. <laughs> I, I know my fan base, baby. Um, how about this? The sad free willy noise. <laughs> yeah, that's the best name so far. Mm. Poor free willy. Poor free willy. Didn't they free that willy. son of a like nine times? It would have been funny if his name was actually Free Willy and he was just confined the whole time. And he was just don't don't give yourself that name, you cocky son of a bitch. Just about him getting beat all the time. <laughs> and then eventually, finally at the end, he just kills his trainer. And we realize that Free Willy was the Sea World guy the whole time. Blackfish. <laughs> there it is. Where's Bane? <laughs> that is uh, oh. uh that's a Tom and Jeff watch Batman reference to famed actor slash lisp holder. God, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, the, the guy, he's in uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Why, I forgot his name. It's fine. We also have Bart Fartigan. <laughs> Jennifer. F fart joke. It is. Jennifer Fendelander. Hey, shout out to Jennifer That's Fendelander. The, I think there's going to be some names that you're going to recognize in here. The most. Oh, I, I better not. The most well-prepared dead guy. Uh, I didn't kill my wife. <laughs> He did. You switched the sample. You switched. The we did a comedy show one time where we all, uh, me, you, Alex Schmidt, and uh, and Tom Ryman of Tom and Jeff Watch Batman fame, we all snuck lines from The Fugitive into our stand up sets to see if anybody yeah. would notice. <laughs> uh, it was great. Uh, no one noticed. No one. Why would they? Uh, Denver. We never got paid for that show. We never uh, got paid for the Denver show. No. no. Adrienne Kelly Stanaway. Silius Ruby. This guy's just Steven in all caps. Steven. Hey, that's that's intimidating. Right? I want to f with Steven. Saint Even. Oh, ooh. Saint Ifan. <laughs> Bienvenue à Saint Ifan. Uh, Dr. DNA. Uh, hey. Burrito Mouth, which. That's a good yeah. mouth. We'll get that surf and turf burrito from Cilantro Mexican Grill in the Chevron station. I like the wet chicken burrito, but we're on the same page otherwise. That's fair. Twitch.tv slash Firechild460. That's a smart oh, way to do this. Yeah. Plug, I, plug, plug. Every time. Plug your Uh Lisa Harden, my co-producer from Mint on Card. Oh, Lisa, of course. Uh, Huey Freeman. Uh, Taurus Bulba. <laughs> That's probably a real name, isn't it? Uh, it might. Uh, I mean, Taurus means uh, bull, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Bulba Bull. 
Bubble. Mind Freak 555. Hey, I recognize that name. Cody Beck Jr. I I know Cody Beck Sr. Yeah. And, and he was a good guy. Cody is a woman. Uh, oh. So when they go to juniors, that's when you go lady lady switch. Oh, I see. Uh, at Gavin underscore not N-O-T-T. Uh, Jessica Robertson. Captain. <laughs> that's funny. That's a great name, right? <laughs> Captain Fat Strong. That's fine. Uh, Gregarious Gregorio. <laughs> The American Pest Control Company. La, uh, live, laugh, listening. Oh, no, not American City Pest Control. Man, we don't know what's going on. Domo Origato, Andrew Roboto. Oh, it rhymes. Lef. Just Lef. Just Lef. L- L-E-F. Just Lef. L-E-F. I like that. That's mysterious. Is it an acronym, I wonder? I don't know. Yeah. For, what, what, could, what could it stand for? Uh, l- last... English fa- fancy. How about I'm very bad at this. I'm how about sorry. let's everyone freak? Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna take you around with me to the. They played uh, Freak Like Me by Adina Howard in my boxing gym this morning. Oh, I was at. Ha- yeah, I was having an argument with someone on a podcast about uh, the notion that women have never been allowed to be sexual or sing about their bodies in song until now. It's what? Like, you ever listened to a f-ing Adina Howard song? She was fil- She was like dolomite. Haven't you listened to to Peaches? Yeah. My, have you not listened to like? Here's the thing. There's a reason why if a person says my neck and my back, you are required by law to say my f-ing and my crack. Yeah. After that, and that's it's because a, of a rap song that came out in like '98 or something. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, we have a uh, gray man of the fireside chronicles, <laughs> right? Ricky, Sol- another plug. I, I don't know. It sounds like a novel. Yeah. It's uh, uh, it is open up my tome of gray man of the fireside chronicles. Uh, Ricky he's cilantro thinking, he's thinking people are going to Google that and I will, but I'm not going to admit it. Yeah. Ricky cilantro, uh, which sounds like a, like a, it's a porn name, right? I th- I think so, yeah. yeah. At Nerd Numbers. McKen- okay. Mackenzie Chill. I recognize that name. Uh, Willem Dafoe's Baffling Big B- Bonanza. <laughs> I love that show when it's, I was a kid. Oh, it was so good. Weird that they put it on PBS, but I'm, I'm not against it. Dan Hackroyd. <laughs> Murph the Murph. Sure. Adam, show me in the rules where it says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> that's a good name russell richardson the sass stan people love oh, old bits i used to do it, yeah that's that's a thing people really yearn for the past when it comes to uh i get tagged in sass stuff clippy stuff and uh and don west rookie card stuff all the time makes sense yeah it sure does um sophia hapgood's psychic services the Ghost of Dave Thomas. Oh. Vrash Never Frozen. Uh, Shebrew Sleeps. Norm from Cheers. Norm! Friend of the pod. Vortispin. Normal Man. Andrew McGuire. Mm. Jolly Buckaroo. Hey. Dill Havarti. You know, you know what they did? That was a, a friend of mine from college. Uh, and now, of course. Uh, he said, pick your favorite cheese and make that the name. Oh, you like a dill Havarti? Dill Havarti is the superior, the most superior of the cheeses. Wow. What's, what's your favorite? That's a bold stance. I mean, I wouldn't put it on pizza, but on a sandwich or like on little crackers. Oh, it's a delight. I like a, uh, I like a raw milk cheddar. Fair enough. I, I like a, uh, I like a sharp cheddar and I like a Colby cheese being from Wisconsin, the yeah. official state cheese of Wisconsin. Not yet. Colby. It's going to happen. Not yet. The, mo- you- the movement is afoot. <laughs> uh, the momentum. For those of you that haven't known, you should check out a, one of the recent episodes of Unpopular Opinion with Kim Crawl, and we do discuss that at length. <laughs> um, and Adam and I defend our region's cheeses uh, with with uh, much aplomb. It gets contentious. Yeah. Uh, exploding runes. Oh. 
JK, Jeff May's biggest fan. Fan. Why did I, I sounded like I added a D at the end. Yeah, you kind of you kind of did. That's fair. and I, I I buy that. I'm sure they're your biggest. I'm certainly not. So for Shizless Jones, <laughs> David Knife Boot Hinson. Knife Boot. Uh, I know what that's from. What's that from? We did an episode of I believe it was Best Bad Movie Ever about Roadhouse, and there is a scene where someone whips out a knife boot. And we talked for about 15 minutes about how impractical of a weapon that would be. Um, the uh, I remember my my ex-wife was Swedish and she was distrusting of Finns, people from <laughs> Finland. And she was yeah. told that Finns keep shivs in their boots. <laughs> and I was like, what the f- kind of weird white on white racist crime is that? Yeah. And what a cool stereotype. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, uh, Funky J. Sure. Won't you take sure. me to mm-hmm. Funky J? I don't get it. That uh, song is called Funky Town, Jeff. Uh, it's Funky Town. Or mm-hmm. if you are the local uh, WLVI TV 56 affiliate, uh, Punky Town, when they showed Punky Brewster. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. They called it Punky Town and they did a whole jingle about it. And I was here. <laughs> it's still in my head. Um, St. Gut Free. Instagrams at Bob underscore of underscore skull. Hmm. Everyone follow that name. Bob of skull. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, I uh, use his HBO max password. Oh, very nice. So he can watch all the hardcore softcore Cinemax. I've been watching. Do they have that on HBO max? I don't, I don't know if Cinemax is still Skinemax like it used to be, but I think so. Wouldn't it be great if there was, <laughs> Like a Netflix for Cinemax softcore. Y- yes. You're just like, I need to watch the mummy's kiss. How do I do that? I, I don't know. I've, I've subscribed to Cinemax at various points and I feel like there might be still an adult section. Like Good. it's half of what Cinemax did. That was all they had. They couldn't afford real movies. So get movies yeah. where chicks are licking each other's thighs or whatever. That's why they called it Skinamax. Yeah, dude. Uh, Mike Gouts. Uh, Grumblebee. Grumblebee. Cronenberger. Mm. Mm. Tasty. No. Land Maiden. Uh, Miguel Acuna. These Seven Bees. Oh. That's a good one. I like bees. My mom's a beekeeper. Your mom's a beekeeper. She gets stung a lot, and then she's just like... Yeah, the bees got me. And I'm like, yeah, that's I a can... pretty chill way to say that you got hurt a lot by bees. Yeah, that's that's not a lifestyle I can embrace. Yeah, they're not a pet. No. Like, no. I don't stop talking fun. about them like it's a pet. Yeah, but like bees don't bees don't want to be your friend. Yeah. They want to they want to have sex with flowers. They sure do. They yeah, they do. <laughs> right? Lemming Malloy. Did you ever play that game Lemmings when you were a kid? When uh you would convince people to jump off a bridge to their death well, yeah. it was a video game but also that there was oh, a game no, where i you, never played the video the, game. the point was to get them to die I you like had to that. kill your whole squad of lemmings by marching them through this like through a geography i think about it now and i'm like that is a disturbing uh, well it reminds me of plague incorporated which is yeah. a hugely popular smartphone game where you play as a virus and your objective is to end humanity. And it is so, so, so fun. I mean, yeah, it is. Um, Kool-Aid Molotov. That's not going to no. burn anyone. You're splashing diabetes on everyone. Yeah, that's just a that's a dumb, dumb idea. It's a cool S- name, though. Stup- Superman family number 184. Uh, oh, this is great. Here's one for you. Adam said to watch The Good Fight. Now I am hooked. Yes! Uh, good Adam. Fight Season 5 just came back. You're exci- I saw the billboards and I was like, oh, good for you guys. I love The Good Fight so much. What's it on? What's the network? It's on uh, CBS All Access, which is now Paramount Plus, I believe. Oh, I have Paramount Plus. Yeah, it's on Paramount Plus. The Good Fight is... It is one of the more educational shows on television. It was the most vehemently anti-Trump show on television 
while he was in office. Very diverse cast. It's about a predominantly black law firm in Chicago. Great show. Christine Baranski's in that, right? Yes. And she is a delight. She can and Delroy get Linda it. up until this season. Um, Ren and Stimpy show number number 16. There it is. How about I'm the law, martial law, and I hate superheroes. How did they spell Marshall? Uh, without, uh, with just one L. M-A-R-S-H-A-L. Okay, that's not, that's not, that's not right. Okay, then uh, I'm the law, Marshall law. <laughs> and I hate It's M-A-R-T-I-A-L. It's Marshall. That's oh, the Marshall well, law. Well, here's the thing is that there's a character named Marshall law. Hey, don't, so, don't contradict me. I'm gonna kill you. Uh, Mr. Billy Beck. You know the, the Becks. You know the Becks. The Mr. Billy Beck. The please. Mr. Yeah. Billy Beck. Uh, I don't care if it's women's deodorant. It works better and smells nicer. Ooh, hard disagree. Yeah? Women's deodorant is pungent. What do you use? I use a old, or not old spice, not anymore since old spice almost killed me. I use a speed stick musk because I can only, you remember I had the yeah, whole. Yeah, you, you had like musk. goiters. Yeah, I almost died from faulty deodorant so now i use a, a speed stick musk because it has no color it's like there's no dyes in it and it smell like no one's wearing musk anymore so i smell like i should be smoking at a doctor's office in the 60s it's great right. um did you uh do you remember spray deodorant remember when that was a thing yeah i don't like, like it that was like super popular in like the 90s yeah, I, I can't use any deodorant except the translucent stick. Anything else makes me break out. Good. It's pretty cool. It's pretty, I assume that's why I'm on this podcast. Yeah, that's we, we have I have a lot of deodorant questions. Yeah. yeah. Kimball, just Kimball. Get vaccinated, you chuckleheads. The 5G lets you see sound, and then you can see your friends again. Let's go. <laughs> I agree with all of that. Yeah. Blackagar Boltagon. It's the name of Black Bolt. From the mm, sure. How about Big Booty Boy 42069? Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, buddy. I like that. Uh Russell from Jersey. Pizza, bagels, Taylor Ham. Sure. Did you ever go to Jersey? Uh yes. I saw I've I've been to Jersey a couple times. Most recently I saw the uh the the Star Wars movie before the most recent one, The Last, last Jedi. Jedi. Uh at a uh movie theater in new jersey with uh Cher martinetti oh wow. is, uh, she was a writer at cracked and uh does a bunch of stuff for the sci-fi network now yeah bold and brash more like belongs in the trash <laughs> i was just gonna say that meth j it's my favorite brand of meth uh, um yes not it's meth with two f's but meth is fine yeah Hi, I'm Super Fudge, and welcome to fudge I don't like that. I think that's a poop reference. I, I hope not, but yes. Uh, craft beers make my alcoholism look like a neat hobby. Not a craft beer fan. I'm a cheap beer fan. Yeah. You're, just yeah, in, I like, you're in it for the final result. No, I just, I don't, I don't like, like you don't drink, so it's, it's hard yeah. to explain to you, but a craft beer tastes very different than just a regular like Coors Light, yeah. Miller Light. I don't always like buy into something being more expensive or like being told something is fancier. Yeah, I mean, craft beer is great if you like beer that's very bitter and doesn't taste good. But beyond, it also, it, it's going to get you the drunkest usually, but it's going to be a very unpleasant next morning. Fair enough. Um, Jez Butt. Yes, but like a butt <laughs> with two T's. Uh, the Ian McClendon. He's a university, by the way. Uh, great football program. Um, L, the best podcast guest no one wants on their show. Seldo. Oh, that's probably not true. That's probably not true. There's worse. I'm not going to have yeah. like Gavin McInnes on my show. I'd rather die. Anyway, next name, Gavin McGinnis. Ooh, yeah, I'd be like, no, you can have your 10 bucks back or whatever it is. Uh, Connor, no nickname given Benson. Uh, get a nickname, Connor. 
Lazy ass Connor. Caitlin Binney. And that's it. That's the whole that's the whole that's oh. the whole thing. That's all, all I right. Have. I don't know what you want from me. I I I was hoping for more names. If you if you uh, want to be a part of that, head on over to patreon.com slash Jeff May at the producer tier. You can get me to say your name and then maybe me and a guest will make fun of it. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I'll just rapid fire those names off so I can get through it. Either it's all deadly. Um, I have some questions for you. Oh no. Shut up. You shut up. If you could like plan out a day food wise. Where would you go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Mm. For breakfast, I I like a I like a diner for mm -hmm. breakfast. And to this day, one of my favorite that I've ever been to, we talked about the tour that we were on with uh, Tom and Alex, mm -hmm. and me and you got in an argument because I was uh, doing a little bit of snoring and you couldn't sleep. So you turned music on, on your cell phone. It's like, yeah, that's going to help us both. And uh, so I stormed out of the room and ended up going to breakfast at this place in Omaha called Eleventh. Oh. And Oh my God, it was so good. I think you, Tom and Alex ended up going there after me. We did. Because I ended up like ordering, like we ordered posters to sign or something so we could sell them. I ended up doing that there. But damn it, that breakfast at Leavenworth was so good. I loved Omaha. I wish we could have spent more time in Omaha. I would live in Omaha. Omaha is amazing. She moved to Omaha. I considered it. It's my only qualm with Omaha is it's not close to to anywhere else yeah my main qualm was that the hotel we stayed at had a pimp sitting outside with a teardrop tattoo because we stayed in a hotel that was frequented by sex workers and not that there's anything wrong with that That's but at right. the same time there was a crime guy hanging out outside with crime weapons that guy was terrifying he sure was and, and he I was there for hours and i was like this is not what i was expecting from omaha can I like Omaha was the biggest surprise I've ever had as a city because yeah. I went to Omaha thinking like it's everyone's going to be just this big corn fed white boys. And boy, was that not the case? Yeah, that I think they call it Old Town area, whatever that uh, shopping district is that's right by the big arena in Omaha. That area is so fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was like a street party when we went there. Yeah, Omaha's great. Yeah, we went into this like weird pop culture museum that was a store. Yeah, the one that had all the racist fans in the back. Yeah, remember I, those? Uh, they were our fans, Adam, and we don't call them that. <laughs> they were uh, like hand fans. Yes, but they were also menus for chicken restaurants, and they had horribly racist depictions of black people on them. Get out! And of I town. was like, oh, that's for sale interesting no oh, how much i'll take it that i really regret there was a magic the gathering like faded black jean jacket there with mm -hmm. the the nightmare character which is like a, a horse that's on fire which is awesome and it was like 75 bucks and i still to this day regret not buying it yeah you should have got that that would have been so good i remember there was a there was a dino riders T-Rex, which was like a very, um, it was like a weird action figure line from the late eighties. And Tom like was like glued to the glass being up. He's oh, just yeah. like, I don't know how I could get this home. Oh yeah. I remember that. He was like, I want this so bad. And he's just like, I, I just can't get it. Yeah. We all left Omaha's Omaha with, great. with regrets of, of wanting to go back. <laughs> oh, I miss yeah. Omaha. So breakfast at the, um, Breakfast at Eleven Eleventh in Omaha. Lunch. Oh, people aren't gonna like this, but I'm gonna go to Arby's just to be in. Yeah, I love Arby's. And you do like Arby's, Arby's is so underrated. I will agree that Arby's is underrated. I I mean I get that it's a controversial pick for your ideal food day, but I don't care. <laughs> and uh, for dinner, I'm I'm having Indian food. Of yeah. some some sort. What kind? I I like either uh, a chicken tikka masala, like Classic, like any white simple, person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a nice British like, meal. Yeah. 
I like a chicken vindaloo. Ooh, you Very like it hot, good. huh? Yeah, I like, yeah, vindaloo is generally the spiciest. And also a lot of places have just, they just call it chicken curry. Mm-hmm. And that chicken curry dish is usually pretty great also. I also, that. I also once ate a curry called fall, P-H-A-A-L. Mm-hmm. And it is the hottest curry. And the the place I ate it at, when they prepare it, they wear a gas mask, for one thing. And then if you eat all of it, they uh, your meal is free and they put your picture on the wall. And I did eat all of it. Yeah? How, how was it? No, I have a question about that because things like, so are you a heat? Like you like heat? I do. I don't like competition level heat just when I'm like yeah. trying to eat food. I don't find that appealing at all. But I... I'm way more likely to finish a heat challenge than a quantity challenge. Yeah. I like, I, you're not going to get me to eat three pounds of ramen or any of this crazy stuff that people do, but heat challenges I'm pretty good at. Yeah. You're like, how can I destroy my bee hole later? Yeah. Yeah. I've done, uh, uh, I did one in South Dakota that was for these wings and, uh, they give you a glove for if you have to go use the bathroom after. Oh yeah. That makes and sense. I was like, I was like, Oh, they're just being dramatic. So I didn't take the glove with me and my <sighs> was a burning for about six hours after that. For about uh, roughly six to eight months. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I don't Periodically know. Periodically yeah. every three or four months. Uh, yeah. I don't think that was the thing that you think it was. <laughs> um, uh, the wings. I do like, um, my favorite Indian dish when done right is shrimp sog. Uh, mm. Like if you don't know what sog is, it's like a, a leafy green kind of, it's almost like a curry, but it's more of like a, um, what well, spinach, Saj. spinach along with, they can make it with mustard greens, collard greens, et cetera. Yeah. Like a lot of times they'll cut it with other greens. Um, Saj, not sog. You oh, asshole. Fine. I mean, I always called it sog and nobody told me not to do it. That Every way. Indian person, you know, hates you. That's fine. There was this great um, Bangladeshi owned Indian place down the street. And I found out they closed. The guy wouldn't take your order until he talked to you for a while to like get the gist of how to prepare your food. That's it was awesome. He would like come out and talk to you and be like, well, what do you like? Tell me how you like it. What are the things you like to eat normally? And he's like, because I'm going to make this for you, but I want it to be very much to your specifications and needs. But he didn't say it that way. Right, but like right. that was essentially what was going on. And this dude knocked it out of the park every single time. I wish I could have eaten there. Yeah. Indian food is my favorite food. I love it so much. I'm I, actually having Indian food tonight. The There's a place that I went to recently that was like a trendy Indian spot. And when, when we got in there, it was like it was like Indian American Canadian fusion. And it was the yeah. worst yeah. It's, everything was like pricey and not good. Yeah, also, there was like, like beef stuff on the menu. And I was like, this feels like you're cheating. Yeah. It is always weird when you see beef on an Indian restaurant. And then you I, remember that Indian place we used to go to all the time after we would record Unpops. Mm-hmm. We would go with Maria Shahada. Yeah. That place was great. They had a nice little buffet that was the went back in the Santa Monica days. So So good. It was right near that dope um, donut shop, too, which was a danger. Yeah, there was it was also next to a pizza restaurant called Classic Pizza. But the eye fell off the sign. So it just said Class C Pizza. Let me tell you, nailed it. (laughs) I love that. You ever have bad pizza and you're like, how did you even do this? The pizza, the night, the one night you got drunk at the Hollywood hotel, that pizza is the only pizza I've ever bitten into and then spit out because it was so bad. I remember there's video of me trying to swallow that pizza and I couldn't. It's so, I was so baffled as to how you could mess up pizza that bad. You like pizza hut, right? Like that's a, that's a go-to for you. Yeah. That's wild. We've had fights about that. Yeah. Pizza hut. I mean, Domino's is trash. It's not. 
Pizza Hut, they just their Detroit style pizza. Oh man. Pizza Hut's Detroit style pizza is one of the best Detroit style pizzas I've ever had. Sorry, Detroit. I will say that Pizza Hut does take risks. Like they're the Taco Bell of pizza joints where they're like, let's get wild. By the same company, yeah. Didn't they? Because they, they, they put like hot dogs in a pizza at one point, like in the crust. <laughs> they sure did. And they're like, you know what? Hot There's no dog rules. stuffed crust. Like, I want to see the people ordering that that are out of college. Yeah. I've never finished a pizza and been like, you know what I could go for 15 to 20 mini hot dogs, but like what, maybe a but, cinnamon roll or something. You know what I'll say though, is as you're finishing a pizza though, you could be like, you know, it would uh, enhance the situation. 15 to 20 mini hot dogs. <laughs> they're, they're not like, they're not the bones of the pizza. You can, you don't have to put them on a plate and finish them later. True. But uh, yeah, it, it, they just seem like tastes that don't go together. I've always been a Papa John's fan too. Ooh, I think they get by a lot on the fact that they have dipping sauces to cover the flavor of their pizza. Up. That no, that, that garlic dipping sauce is worth the price of admission in and of itself. It sure is. I mean, it's tasty, but also like, I feel like it's not worth Like there are certain things for me that I consider like not worth giving my money to. And that's one of those companies where I'm like, Papa John's. I mean, it's owned by Shaq now. Shaq and John Leguizamo. Let me tell I mean, you. They're, they're the ones in the commercials, so I assume they own the place now. Shaq's, Shaq's choices in advertising. They, he's like, oh, we're in a general. And I'm like, do you need this money from the general? I have a feeling he's getting like part ownership in a lot of the things. It seems like that's the thing. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Because I was just like, the general, huh? We make insurance. It's really bad. Like if you know somebody that has the general insurance, you're not getting paid if they hit yeah. you. It's it seems like it's not real. I don't. I've never known anyone to have. I mean, I guess I don't ask. Like, what kind of car insurance do you have when I meet a person? If anybody has the general, sound off in the comments because I'm actually fascinated to know what yeah. you did in your life to make you end up having to need to use the general. Because they're like the mercury insurance of insurance. Yeah. It it seems like a down on your luck kind of thing. Yeah. Like no one else will have you come get insurance with the general. Yeah. This 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 cartoon general that's like not finished. And you know, there's no way Shaq is insuring his stuff through the general. Right? Yeah, like his Maseratis and shit or whatever yeah. he has to fit in. Like that, like how Chris Paul in all of his state farm ads. He's driving like a Kia SUV. It's like, no, he's not. There it is. Chris Paul, fun fundamentally sound Chris Paul in all aspects of his life. I, I love Chris Paul. He's about to win an NBA championship, and I'm so happy for him. I'm going to tell you this, that uh, as of the recording, he either did or didn't win an NBA uh, championship by the time this goes up. Cause I hope I didn't blow that prediction. Uh, wouldn't that be so funny if you did, though? Yes. If yes. like they have a 2004 Red Sox turnaround where they would just... be. Yeah. Cause this episode is actually going up July 27th. So Rude. I mean, it, I mean, it is currently July 27th as we are talking right now. Right. We're yeah. I, I assumed it was going up later. Correct. Today. Yes. That, that is it. I, I'm certainly have not been on vacation for a couple of weeks in Massachusetts. I say vacation, yeah. but that's not what that is. That's not vacation now. No time where it's just like I'm going to my hometown to be with my family. That's not a vacation. No, no. It's a it's a reminder. Yeah, it's an obligation. Yeah. I mean, I love my mom and I want to be around it, but three weeks? That's a long time. Yeah. That's a very long time. It's how I buy not having to come back for a while afterwards. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm like a time-shared human. Yeah, last time I went home, I was there for like two days. I'll probably go back. So I, I might go back at some point. I uh, just had a show there on July 23rd and uh, it went great. No, it didn't, Jeff. No, I remember it going very well. Uh, I was I've like, heard... you know what? I haven't done stand up in like a year and a half minus a couple of smaller groups. Let's do uh, let's do 45 minutes. Yeah, might as well. Why I might not? as well just do it. I'd like dust off an hour. Try it out. Just have it out there. I might do one of those like lazy specials where the comedian puts their notebook out on the bench on the stool 
And they're like, I'm going to do this thing. And everyone's like, oh, it's so cool and, and new. And it's like, stop. It's lazy. It's lazy. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I made it a point at one point when I was doing comedy to not have to bring notes out at all. Because it's really, it's not that hard to just remember what order you want to tell jokes in. So I would just like sit and stare at my, I would like write out a set list and then just kind of try and memorize it. Yeah, that's, I would, I just would usually take a small set list and put it out on a stool ahead of time yeah. and have it yeah. there. I just, mean, I used to do that too, yeah. but what, what I would run into is there would be instances where I couldn't do that. And then it's like, well, now where do I put this in your, set list? In your pocket, baby. Yeah. In your tape pocket. It your, tape it to your hand. Just have a huge like set list written down. Because I know <laughs> comics that would write it on their hand, and I'm like, that's just a bad idea. I've I've written it at the the joint of my thumb and my finger, like where I'm holding the microphone. The web? Be yeah, because then the audience can't see it. And when I look down, it looks like I'm just looking at the microphone. Yeah, I've I've been I want to get out and do more shows but i'm i'm so overdoing comedy in la yeah like i want to just book shows and go out on the road which is hard because you want the practice but at the same time you don't want to have to do it here right and yeah i don't i don't know if practice in la is even that beneficial it depends on where you go you have yeah. to go somewhere like here's the thing is I've been seeking out open mics that are outside of Hollywood, which I've done most of the time. But like I found a great one in the valley at a bowling alley and there's audience. Oh, nice. And so and they the the, the people that run it, they are they appreciate that I make the drive out there. And, and, you know, I think they I think they think that I'm a bigger comedian than I am. Mm, yeah, I think they think that it's like, oh, Jeff, and I'm just like, not a thing. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. but cool. they'll give me like extra time and they'll 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 place me in a spot that's advantageous. They'll be like, you know, even if I show up, I'll be like, hey, can you put me up whenever you whenever you want? And they'll be like, okay, we'll get you up as you know, they'll like wedge yeah. me in. And so I've really been getting work in front of re real actual people instead of bored comedians. Yeah. So yeah, that's the thing. I just I I'm I'm not gonna tell my jokes to a room full of bored comedians like you said and like it it just it it almost feels counterproductive sometimes i've thought about like now i live i'm still in la county but i'm way south yeah. in la county i've actually thought about trying to see if there are open mics down in this area and i don't know if there are any but not a lot the west side yeah. does not have a lot of mics anyway and further yeah, well, south I'm not, you go. I'm not I'm not on the west side. But you're in the water. So yeah, like I, mean, I would consider that anything coastal I consider to be like quote west side because sure. That area does not I guess it's sort of like anything it's like the geographically speaking there's um there is a dividing line uh called the 405 which is a highway that runs uh north and south. And so yes. generally in Los Angeles, people are either east or west of the 405 and they do not travel past that dividing line. Yeah. I had a, a colleague who moved here from Portland. And if you live almost anywhere else and you see that your office is, say, eight or nine miles from where you're planning to live, <laughs> that's a drive, but it's not that bad of a drive it's maybe 15 to 20 minutes yeah i had a friend who moved here from portland and had he was working in santa monica and decided to move to silver lake and so for those of you that don't know silver lake is a very trendy neighborhood towards like almost eastern los angeles yes it's it's very very much east of the 405 and his commute ended up being something like an hour and a half an hour and 45 minutes each way and it like it ruined him he had he eventually just moved back to portland i mean tom ryman uh moved out towards like bakersfield because when cracked fired everybody he's like well i need a place to live 
and yeah. I can't afford anywhere out in LA right now and had to move out to Bakersfield. And when he was writing for Collider and working in the office, he was driving like an hour and 25 minutes every morning. Oof. Can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, that that's LA though. Like no. me and uh, Olivia Hydar were, or no, me and Caitlin cut. were just talking about this. LA is not fun. Like if it, I know it seems like a place where, oh, I've always wanted to visit L.A. You really don't. No, it's a real it's a real bummer. Like the biggest is when people go to Hollywood and Highland. Yeah. Which is like sort of like the spot everyone wants to go to. Hollywood Boulevard has like the Walk of Fame and blah, blah, blah. It is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's a great place to uh, get murdered. Buy tapes if if you're in the market or take pictures with a musty Spider-Man for five dollars. <laughs> yep. Those pictures are not free, by the way, tourists. Yeah, and they will assault you if you yeah. do not pay. You'll you'll have more fun going to San Diego, to be honest, or San Francisco. Yeah. I think are both more enjoyable cities to visit because L.A. is just so hard to get around. And also, if you think that you're just going to go to Disneyland when you're in L.A., that is a 45-minute to an hour and a half drive. Yeah, it's it's not close. And also everything is a 45 minute yeah. to hour drive. And also Anaheim sucks. Yeah. Anaheim sucks. I love when people would, uh, people would let me know that they're going to come out on vacation and then they'd be like, so what do you want to do? And I'd be like, I don't know, man, I want to work. Yeah. Like my, your vacation isn't my vacation. Number one, number two, like, I don't think the stuff I want to do is the stuff you want to do. Yeah. If, if you come to LA expecting a friend or family member to show you around just know that that friend or family member is going to resent the shit out of you by like day one and a half yeah and and also i've had somebody come out and they wouldn't tell me what they wanted to do they wanted me to like be their travel agent <laughs> and i'm like you need to give me and it's like oh i don't care and i'm like you need to f and care yeah like you need to care because i can't book what if I book something and you're like, well, that's not what I like. And I'm like, well, you didn't say anything. Finally, yeah. at one point in time, I, I had a person and they were just like, well, I like live music. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. We can do something with that now. LA is a great place for live music. It is. But you, you have to live here to really soak up those benefits. Yeah. I got to see John Mulaney live last month. Oh, nice. At, uh, at the Troubadour. And they had seats, which they never do. Oh, yeah, I like that. It was good. I can't wait to see how it's going to be as a um, polished special. Yeah. Because it's different from everything that you would expect because it's about the direction his life has taken. You know who else did comedy at the Troubadour? Elton John. I did. You sure did. Remember that? You did when, we, when you were opening for Portugal the Man. We were feet from Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And no we, one could build up the courage to say anything well we didn't know it was her at first yeah because we i was like this girl looks like mary elizabeth winstead and you were like holy shit she does look like mary elizabeth winstead <laughs> and we didn't put two and two together this is woman in la would be there yeah. and then and they were like she we was just on a song with portugal the man so it would stand to reason that she would be at the show yeah she was a noise pollution and then they were like we'd like to bring up our very good friend mary elizabeth winstead and me and you were just like ah ah it's her yeah, that was that fun. was fun. Yeah, and then she ruined you and McGregor's marriage. Oh, that's right. That's not you can't say she did. She did not do that. That's he participated in that equally. Mm. And I'm assign blame to the woman. That's silly. Wow, Jeff. I know. Hey, would you rather eat at Buffalo Wild Wings or Hooters? Uh, in terms of food, I would rather eat at Hooters. But in the general experience, you're like, but in ch with chicks with a great rack. Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hooters chicken wings are just like no other chicken wings ever. They're so good. I love them so much, but they're only good. You have to get them breaded and you have to eat them there. You can't get oh, yeah, them no, delivered. Hooters there. delivery. Yeah. You don't, you don't want that. I did that once in like in my twenties and never again. Yeah. I'm haunted to this very day. <laughs> Hooters, yeah, you know, I've, you know what they do? They make probably the best fried pickle chips I've ever had. I've I've heard the fried pickles are good. Yeah, Hooters Buffalo Wild Wings is my alternative 
to Hooters because I, I love chicken wings. I'm a big Buffalo wings person. And uh, Hooters, they're, they're going extinct. It's a dying breed. The one in Burbank that we used to go to all the time shut down. R.I.P. There's not one where I live now. The closest one is Long Beach. And there's so much drama in the LBC. Can I be honest? Long Beach is the Hooters of cities. <laughs> yeah, Long Beach is tense. Whenever you, like, Long Beach, I finally understand Sublime when I pull up to Long Beach. <laughs> like, yeah. where I'm, because it's got this, like, Long Beach, is, like, I've had great experiences in Long Beach, and there are beautiful areas along the coast and everything like that. But Long Beach has this, like, film on it. It's like weird kinda, it's kind of scuzzy a little bit. The yeah, comedy only... scene's always weird there and kind of gross. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I'm close enough to Long Beach that I could maybe consider going there to do comedy, but I don't want to go to Long Beach for anything. Yeah, no, I get that. But I mean, I will say some of the best pizza I've ever had was at uh, Keith Carey and Kyle Clark ran a show called Knife Fight. And it was at a pizza place, and they had killer pizza there. Oh, yeah? And it was in Long Beach? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. There's some spots. Yeah, yeah, I guess Keith Carey used to live down in that area, I think. He sure did. Yeah, he was in Long Beach. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's it's funny, too, because like when you talk about, like, we're, we're doing a lot of geographic conversation about, uh, about L.A., but what it really comes down to is, like, L.A. is such a leviathan. It's so big and there's so yeah. many different chunks of it. it. It's it's very much sort of like, I mean, we're kind of having like the New York boroughs talk. You're yeah, like, it's it's like 50 or 60 different cities. Yeah. basically it's, is what L.A. is. It is wild. And uh, there are people that are like, oh, you live in the valley. Like, I'm not going out there. And people are snobs. Don't be a f-ing snob. Yeah. My experience in L.A. is that people who grew up here are actually, it seems like a lot more sheltered than people I've known who lived pretty much anywhere else. Really? And it seems like that wouldn't be the case, but LA is so segregated. Like there are just pockets of LA where certain people live. And that has like, it's changed to some extent. Some of it's been gentrified. Yeah, but not real. Like the areas that weren't that that I guess uh, haven't been gentrified because they were already nice. It's not like gentrification has pushed more uh, poor people into those areas. I don't know where people go when they get gentrified out of a neighborhood in L.A. because it's not like anywhere is cheap anymore. And L.A. is I, I don't know. Like it's it's not what people think it is. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I def- I certainly was um, not shocked, but like my first time in L.A., I was like, this place is a lot more going on than I thought. It's a lot bigger than I thought. But there is a lot of cool stuff to do out here too. Oh, of course, We're, like the museum culture and stuff. But it's also stuff that I'm not taking advantage of. Like the La Brea yeah, tar pits are awesome. I've still never been to the La Brea tar pits. I haven't been to the Griffith Observatory. Uh, there's a lot of LA landmarks I haven't seen. Cause once you get here, like as a kid, I kid you not, my aspiration in life was to live somewhere that had all three major sports leagues. And when I moved to LA, I accomplished that. And like, that's, that's all, that's the only really attraction that I need is concerts and sporting events. So I don't like, I, I just don't make it a, I've never made it a point to go see any of this LA stuff. That's so iconic and famous. It's like New Yorkers talking about how they've never been to the statue of Liberty. Cause yeah. it's just ubiquitous. It's just there. Yeah. And like, why would I go to that? It's yeah. Just there. It feels like tourist stuff because it's, it's tourist, tourist stuff. stuff. Although but I do I'm go, sure the, I, I do like universal. I've still never been there. I've never been to Disneyland. The only times I've been to Disneyland is when somebody else paid. Because I've been like, look, I'm I'm not gonna I'm I can't afford to go to Disneyland. It's very expensive. But like it's only two hundred dollars to just get in <laughs> if you want to do it the way we want to do it. You cool? And I'm like, no. Yeah, two hundred dollars is a lot. That to, is a lot of money to a podcaster and comedian. Like, yeah, 
I, uh, it's funny too, cause I was having this conversation recently where I was just like, somebody asked me what I do for a living. And I realized that saying professional podcaster has like a, like a, a stank on it where people are like, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I miss the glory days of being able to say Uber driver. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like podcasts are getting a little more mainstream. It's like writing on the internet for the longest time. If you weren't writing for a newspaper or a magazine, people felt like you weren't an actual writer. And that's obviously not true. And we eventually grew out of it. And I feel like it'll get the same way with podcasts. It's, I think there's like a stink of, of there being like, oh, surprise, you're a white guy with a podcast. And I'm like, no, I'm a white guy with a successful podcast. Right. Big difference. There sure is. Um, I want to talk about successful podcasts. I want to talk about the Unpopular Opinion Network and the in the sort of the growth. And, and specifically, how many shows are on the network? Right now, the thing is, I I have a bunch of shows that I host that I, I don't host all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like I'll do them in seasons and rotate them in and out. But at any given time, I think we have like, close to like it's only like 10 or so shows at any given time well is that it because i have some i have some monthly shows probably i'd say 13 to 15 at any given time it's a lot to juggle that that is like how does one because i i do i have essentially four that i that i do this Mm -hmm. one which is uh currently bi-weekly hopefully changing soon. Uh, so I have this one. I have Tom and Jeff watch Batman, which is weekly. Uh, I have, uh, you don't even like sports, which is one of those periodic sort of biweekly ones with you on the Unpops network. And then uh, whenever I'm co-hosting Unpops, which is, I would say, generally speaking about biweekly. And that's yeah. four shows, including, you know, some research and blah, 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 and everything like that. And I get burnt. Uh, and you're working around a network that has anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 shows going at a time. Yeah. It, it comes from like when I, when I was first starting out in writing and trying to establish it as a thing that I could do for a living, I was still working a day job. So I would have to work from, you know, like eight to five or whatever my schedule was and then come home and just stay up and, write articles and try to sell those articles. And when I started working at Cracked, there was a not great culture at Cracked when it came to work hours. You were just sort of expected to always be working. And so I, I've just kind of, it's not weird for me to work like 11 or 12 hours a day. Like I, I don't get burnt out the way I think a lot of people would just, and I'm not saying that's a healthy thing. (laughs) Like, it's just, it's just a thing that was conditioned into me from first trying to, you know, change careers in my thirties and then working at a place where, you know, you might get an email at one 30 in the morning, wanting you to fix something that's going up at 6am. Like that, that kind of stuff wasn't unusual at all. Really? So I, I'm I'm able to work a lot without getting super burnt out by it. Do you, does that overwhelm you at all though? Or is it, are you just like, are there moments where you're just like, I remember recently, the reason I said it is because obviously I'm, spoiler alert, because I was having this vacation planned, I've been banking a lot of shows. And the amount of work that I have done has essentially doubled to tripled. And I was like, I started to like freak out. Like I started to have like claustrophobia and it got to one point where I had to stop watching an episode of Batman in the middle of it. Cause I was just too tired of taking notes and and consuming all this. And I had to like go outside cause I felt like I was being choked. Yeah. For me, that happens when I'm actually, when I'm like running behind on stuff. Like when, cause there'll be times where, you know, it'll be Monday and I don't have any of the podcasts for the week recorded, except usually unpopular opinion. And those are more the moments where it feels overwhelming. Like 
what you're describing where you bank a bunch of episodes, that's actually what you should do because then you can take a week or two off whenever you want, not just when you're vacationing. Like what I shoot for and I don't always accomplish it is trying to record close to an entire month's worth of stuff the first couple weeks of the month. So then the last couple weeks, like I still have to work, but I don't have to, I can more casually research stuff to record the next month. It's just a, it's just being organized, I guess. It's my, my, my big move being organized. It's my, my, (laughs) the famously organized Jeff May. Um, Yeah. It is, uh, that is, uh, it's, it feels like it can be brutal. It's very like some of this, it feels like, uh, you feel like Sisyphus, you know, when you're like with, of all things, the Batman podcast is the one that feels that way because there is never going to be an end to it. Like there's a zero end game to that. And sometimes that becomes where I'm just like, man, I am smoking the whole carton of this show. (laughs) Like of this character, like yikes um we it's funny because we um you know our sort of baby is, is, together is that you don't even like sports podcast which, which is about how it's about how you don't you don't look, even no, like sports that's, right no it's about how you adam todd brown doesn't like sports now it's funny because we do this bit where we talk about how the other person doesn't like sports and the fans love to get involved and tweet at us about how we don't like sports yes do you do you like that because of sort of how strong the bit has become or are you like yeah I got it that's enough I mean it all it all depends on the fan yeah. like I I'm never going to be mad when people appreciate what we do uh I think people get that I'm really busy and don't always I I sometimes see tweets and just don't have the emotional energy to interact mm-hmm. but I I mean I like that people like what we're doing yeah i i love that it's sort of like i've kind of leaned in lately to like the cult aspect of my career which is yeah. like that you know i get that i'm probably i'm probably most likely never going to be like a very mainstream um podcaster like i'm not gonna do like last podcast on the left or whatever like these things where they're like we made 15 million dollars from our podcast last year yeah and you're like jesus I do like that the fans that we do have are so ardent. Yeah. And the business model, uh, the the subscription model, as opposed to leaning on just advertising, having worked in online entertainment for more than a decade now, going, going on 15 years, ad money is a fleeting thing. Like they're, they're, will come a point where a lot of that ad money that's flowing into podcasts right now, it just takes like one little algorithm tweak or any little thing. And a lot of that money will get pulled out from underneath people. Yeah. Where's your purple and, mattresses now, everybody. Yeah. And when that happens, a lot of, a lot of these podcast networks are going to start cutting podcasts and like, we don't necessarily have to worry about that. Like not as much. Like we make some ad money on Unpops, like on the Unpops network, mm-hmm. but it's it's definitely not what we lean on to survive. It's it's yeah. the fans, and it's kind of comforting knowing that at the very least, I just need to keep like two to three thousand people happy. Like I don't have to worry about keeping the entire public entertained or this like audience of, um, of millions of people, which don't get me wrong. If a million Should people happen, started yeah. listening to unpops tomorrow, I'd be all for it, but it's a lot of pressure. It's a whole lot of pressure, a lot yeah. of scrutiny. It, it is wild to think about the disparity financially in podcasting where you're like, Oh, I'm in the top percent and I don't make I don't make 2% of what some of these people make, you know, like it's wild to me. Yes. I think it's something like 3% of podcasts actually make money, which I mean, not a lot. It's, it really isn't. And I always, I get, you get a lot of people that ask you like, how do I do this? And then you're just like, I don't know, man, you just 
just keep doing it, I guess. I used to like, I, you're really good about responding to people who message you. And I think that opens you up to a lot more, a lot more messages. I do. I think that's important. I do think that's important for me where I am. Yeah. Cause I'm, I mean, might... I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying why I am so accessible. And I certainly like, as things grow, you know, maybe that accessibility starts to low, but if someone like messages me on the Patreon or like on Twitter, like on the Patreon, I, I will almost lick yeah, and split I, be I like, Hey, when people message me, like, I'm not saying I yeah. don't respond to people, but yeah. you're, you're more approachable than most. And I feel like people probably hit you up a little more because of that, which that's not a bad thing. No, but yeah, when people, no one really asks me, well, no, I've gotten some questions about podcasting and I mean, I answer them. They're easy questions. They like podcast. It's the lowest barrier of entry of like any medium. It is, but a high barrier for success. It's a high barrier for success, but you can't expect that it's just going to be successful right away. Yeah. So I generally like, what's the advice that you dole out? Because I'm wondering if we match up in our, if for the advice, because I have a couple of things that I always say when people ask me that. Um, my advice for people starting a podcast is focus. If your podcast has a premise stick to that premise. It's actually not funny when you go off on 25 minute tangents that aren't about what you're talking about. Like people don't like that. Like you and your friends in the room might be living it up, but the people at home are like, I don't know you people. Yeah. This isn't fun. And so if, if your podcast has a point, stay on point. If it's just like a, like this is more of a general like uh, format where things it's, it's not like a static thing. So it's fine if we go off on tangents on a podcast like this, cause that's what it's about. It's yeah. about seeing where the conversation goes. But if you're like doing like a hardcore history type of thing, don't talk about how your week went. And if you do edit that out, yeah. because it like, you're 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 gonna lose people and also be consistent that's that's my like my number one thing is consistency yeah like when i first started the podcast when i first started on pops like three or four weeks into it i had to go to new york for uh to i was writing for a tv show and I like even in New York, even with knowing very little about how to do podcasts at the time, I hit up, uh, I think it was stand up New York because I knew they had a podcast studio. And I was like, Hey, I'm i uh, I work for cracked. Can I come record a podcast at your place? And j I did that just to make sure I had an episode out yeah. because people, people want to hear it. I have like tension about a lack of consistency. Where I'm like, I have to make sure, like, if I have a weekly show, it has to be done. Like, I don't, especially when it's listener supported. Like, yeah. there's the reason, like, I'm banking these shows and, and everything like that. And it's because I'm absolutely terrified of not giving people what they paid for. Or yeah, what they expect. Course. I also, I really throw in the whole, like, have a, have a reason to have a podcast. Yes. I tell that to people a lot. Like, have a reason to do this. That's beyond just me and my friends are talking, which I understand is literally the crux of this show, but this is just a sequel to another interview show. Well, there's a difference between an interview show and a show that you say is about a thing. Yeah. But then it ends up not being about that thing. It means it ends up just being you and your friends joking around. The, the winging it aspect of podcasting is, is the, the, it's not going to go well. It's not going to go as well as people think it is. To wing it on a podcast and be successful, you have to already have an audience. Mm -hmm. Like that that's the kind of stuff you can do when you know you just have a built-in audience that's going to listen to you do anything. Like you got to be like Dax Shepard <laughs> to just wing it on a podcast. 
and be successful at it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just every other podcast. And that's like cheating. That's like being Jeremy Piven doing stand up and selling tickets. You're know, yeah. like, well, you're not, yeah. it's not the thing you're doing. So, you know, we, there's a lot to build up. But I know a lot of people and probably a lot of listeners do want to know about that and how to reach success. And, and you know, I think I've reached a, a mild level of success. And I think that you have, um, obviously, you've, you've gotten much further in your success. You've been doing your own thing for much longer. Yeah. And so I did want to address that because I think it is important, especially as people are building that up. They're building up their, you know, like you said, there's a low barrier of entry and it's becoming more and more accessible um, to make sure that if you want to reach success. The other thing that I tell people a lot is I was like, be prepared to work for free for a long time. Oh, yeah. Like, don't expect this to be financially rewarding. And, you know, there's work. Every hour of a podcast takes at least three hours of work. It is. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work. The only like the only way I'm able to to balance it out and put out as much stuff as I do is some stuff will be things I have to put a lot of research into. But then there's shows like Listcast where I just have to find two people and pick five things and the research is done. But either way, it's a, it's going to be a lot of work if you want a podcast that actually makes you money like you got to figure out how to build that audience make money and yeah <laughs> like if you like you don't need a huge audience like we like unpops is a relatively obscure podcast and network both like we're not huge but we're big enough that i'm able to eat and pay people to help me run this network so like but you got you got to be prepared to put in some work to build that audience it's not just gonna happen yeah it's it's because my audience is so weirdly cultivated that like you know i want this show to be more than bi-weekly um but it's just i can't afford it between all the other things that i have to do in order to stay alive um yeah. and so it's like okay well once this hits a certain amount of you know, patrons, well, then I can afford to pay an editor uh, to do X, you know, two more episodes a week. It's not free. Uh, yeah. And I'm bad at it. I tried it. This is not, it's not, it's not, Editing's not that hard. You I say could, that. You, well, did you ask me? Did you, did you ask me? I've asked you and you give me information and it is sound, good information. And I'm terrible at processing it. There's just, mm. there are certain things. I don't like to make excuses, but there are certain things that definitely go in one ear and out the other for me. It's not a choice. It's not a lack of interest. It's just some things are hard for me. Rude. I'm a rude boo. I'm a rude dude with a bad dude. I don't know what you want from me about that. Um, Adam, uh, what do we got? What do we got coming up for you in August and in the future? What, 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 what are some what are some things that we should be on the lookout for from you? Uh over on the the Unpops Patreon and Supercast, we just started up another season of the music podcast that I host with Andy Sell and Travis Clark. Uh, this season is about Steve Earle, who is a music legend and Bubbles AA sponsor on The Wire. And uh, that's a very fun podcast. If you've never listened to it, uh, you should. And you can hear it at patreon.com slash unpops and unpopsnetwork.supercast.tech. Other than that, I nothing think, in I think August. we're going to start You Don't Even Like Sports back up, too. That will be coming back soon. Uh, and I think I think we both have come to the consensus. We might as well make that sort of like soft announcement in here. Why not? Why not some specific content? I think we did both agree on who we want to do the next season on. Juan Daly, uh, famed golfing dirtbag John Daly, um, a fascinating man. He's got a big ass Santa Claus beard now. Oh, of course he does. That guy's great. Um, so you can check that out. Now, give me run off the names of some of the the shows on the network and and like describe them real quick for people in case they might not know. So they might want to find something that fits their interests because you literally cover all interests in your shows. Uh, one of our most popular shows is called Conspiracy the Show, which is about it's about conspiracy theories. But here's the thing. It's not one of those conspiracy theory podcasts that's encouraging people to storm the Capitol. 
It is an objective conspiracy theory podcast because some things are true and some things are just demonstrably false. And we look at conspiracy theories from that angle and uh, a lot of stuff we don't believe. I do think Elvis faked his death and joined witness protection. We have an episode about that. Uh, Pretty scary. It's a paranormal, uh, true crime sort of podcast that I host with Caitlin Cutt. Uh, Best bad movie ever with Tom Ryman and David Christopher Bell. It's a great show to do. About uh, terrible films and the people who love them. Uh, So many. List cast. You have the music. List building show. There's the music ones. There's Trend Pony. Trend Pony, where me and Jen Scott and Jessica Singer talk about music, movies, uh, TV shows that we're into at the moment. You have, uh, there's a lot for there's uh, I believe it's, it's 12. 12 questions that is hosted by Anna Valenzuela and David Yates. That is a podcast about uh, sobriety and recovery. Also two non-doctors with Maria Shahada and Liz Mealy. That is a very fun podcast. They just had ESPN's Katie Nolan on recently. I don't know how that happened. All right. I want Katie Nolan on my podcast. All right. Tell me about Celebra Tragic. Celebra Tragic is available on the Patreon and uh, the, the Supercast also. And that is a podcast where me and Carrie Martin talk about celebrities and the uh, tragic things that often happen to celebrities. The first season was about Anna Nicole Smith. Second season was about Whitney Houston. And now we're just kind of doing single one-off episodes. We did one about the death of Dimebag Daryl recently. Six, Crazy story. Six, 69 minutes. 69 minutes is our monthly chat show that I host with Chat Wild. <laughs> His name's actually Chet. And uh, that's where we do a live Zoom uh, webinar and let fans ask us unscreened, unfiltered questions. Uh, and we answer them. We try. Sometimes and I edit them out. The was the nineties sucked. Uh, is that a um, is that still going? The nineties sucked. I uh, have just started researching the next season of the nineties sucked. The first three episodes are going to be about the arrest of Manuel Noriega. They found He's in Manuel the Philippines. <laughs> Listen to Super Thug by Noriega. That song is so great. It's so good. I have it on record single. That's that's perfect. It is. Um, Adam Todd Brown, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. It was so nice to get to talk to you about like just us instead hey, of good to meet you. It was it was such it wasn't. No, yeah. No, you're no. a bad person. Um yeah, this is fun. Don't follow Adam on Twitter. He doesn't use it anymore. He doesn't want it. But follow yeah. follow all the shows. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm on Twitter. Like sometimes, if if someone gets under my craw, I'll respond. Someone tweeted at me today and said, "Is it just me, or is Jason Pargin just operating on a higher level than the rest of us?" And he tagged me and a bunch of other cracked people in it, and I just wrote back and said, "It's just you." <laughs> like, wait, what do you? Th- Tag me and say, "Hey, don't you think this guy's smarter than you?" Absolutely not. That works. That that that's that's it. That's Fuck how it. you get me to respond on that's Twitter. Superlative <laughs> superlative statements. Uh, there was a like on that, by the way. It was very funny. Oh, very nice. So that works. Uh, well, uh, so thank you very much, Adam. And don't forget, uh, listen to all of those shows on Unpops or just cherry pick your ones you want. Definitely listen to You Don't Even Like Sports, sports podcast about how Adam doesn't like sports. Um, it is about how Jeff doesn't. That's like not sports. true. It's and correct. Of, and of course, the Unpopular Opinion Show. We just crested past 400 glorious episodes, um, of so which many. I was around for m- m- most. I would say most. There was a pocket where we weren't speaking. Uh, and there are several episodes that are no longer available. Uh, R.I.P. Because Cracked owns those. And honestly, going back and listening to them, Cracked can have them. Yeah, keep them. You know <laughs> yeah. what? You can have it. I can't believe, by the way, that that other company just erased all of my shows. I'm still yeah, I'm still blown up. away by that. That happened to me at Playboy. The whole website that I launched and ran when they like 
relaunched their Playboy website. They just redirected that website to playboy.com. I asked them if I could just have the episodes back and they were like, no. But then somebody told me they, they archived them all. Oh, you, you're not saving these somewhere? Well, I did not the ones over there because I, I recorded them in studio. They weren't mine. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but somebody did archive them and was like, I could just post them myself. And I'm like, yeah, that's not me doing it. Yeah. If anybody wants to download them, that's fine. It was public. Is that public domain? Is that, I don't know how it works. Well, I'm, I'll tell you, there are sites out there where people upload like subscription feeds. So uh, they get away with it. Don't do yeah. that. Yeah, it's a move. Um, so that being said, uh, you can also check out, uh, my show, Tom and Jeff watch Batman on the gamefully unemployed Patreon. You can check out, you don't even like sports and on pops, uh, through on pops, either Patreon or supercast. Uh, thank- yeah, yeah. and if you are listening to this for free, thank you so much for giving me your ears. And if you want to head on over to patreon.com slash Jeff may for early access to episodes, plus Shit. a little bit more, uh, plus all the cursing Fuck. not bleeped out. Yeah. You could do all that. You could get some f-ing swears. I'm s- I'm so sorry to my producer who has to <laughs> edit all these out. Poor man. Um, but of course, uh, you can make sure you definitely do that. Uh, thank you so much. I also have a new show coming out. I did just announce on the Patreon uh, that I am currently researching, working on, getting the art coming for, and it is called Radvertising. And uh, let me tell you, it is wild, the rabbit holes I've been going down. So I'm very excited to bring this to you. Very nice. Uh, thank you, Adam. Say goodbye. Hey, goodbye. Uh, Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you in two weeks. Hey, everyone. Our artwork is created by Justin T. Brown, who can be found at Artness by Justin Brown on Instagram, as well as Artness by Justin Brown dot com. That dope music you heard is by Troy Nababon, available at Troy Nababon on Instagram, as well as at Troy dot com. Nababon is spelled N 